This is the EVGA RTX 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra and to remove the heat sink from the PCB you got your same four GPU screws but there's a spring retention bracket um, just be careful and mindful of that and then you got some other screws as well uh, one is going to be hidden by a warranty label but four five six seven eight nine and you got to be very careful because trying to find it can be a little bit cumbersome just look for the warranty label there's one you don't need to remove all screws. For example, there's one over here in the corner that is being held on by a little nut. There's a couple of those on this GPU, a couple more by the IO, as you can see. And the screws you're gonna be basically removing are uh, the two by the warranty label or middle of the card by the OC switch right here, um, or BIOS, and then there's three more back here, and then of course your main four. Once you have that, be very careful. You're going to want to pry more from the I.O. side of the GPU, wiggling and lifting up. Uh, and when you do, you're going to have to disconnect your fan headers. Uh, and there's one more connection right here for, I believe, the RGB on the back. They're going to be very careful. It's very hard to maneuver this card without pulling on those connections. So just be mindful and be careful. We've already cleaned up everything. And the cooler for the EVGA card is actually really nice. This is a nice copper cold plate, nice surface area. We got plenty of cooling capability if we could absorb the memory heat. We're still thermal throttling, even though I replaced the thermal pads already on this GPU. Those are some Thermal Grizzlies uh, minus pad eight. We're gonna try the copper shim mod to see if that alleviates anything. Now you're gonna need two mil on the front, three mil for the back side of the PCB between the PCB and the back plate. Uh, this is 1.8 mil is what we have, so we're going to have to add some thermal paste to see if we can close that gap. And we just need to go ahead and add this and see what the actual results are. So let me get started. So I had some issues come up, and let me explain. But first, some thermal results. Right now, you can see the RTX 3080 is only running between 88 to 84 degrees Celsius, peaked out on the memory temperature of 88, max uh, core temperature of 59 or 60. So we're definitely running a lot cooler. However, this is not because of copper shims. This is actually because of thermal pads, the same thermal pads that I originally removed. And what I'm assuming is that they weren't making sufficient contact, especially on the back side of the PCB, because we were running upwards of 106, 108, sometimes 112, 110 C. So the performance that we're getting right now is so much better, including the hash rate not being so handicapped. But what happened was, is the copper shim, uh, especially here on the left hand side where we have the four memory modules was actually putting pressure against this SMD in the upper corner of the die or the GPU layout uh, so the copper shim was putting pressure against that breaking through my nail polish thus causing a short now I actually did lose one display port this guy right here but the other two are available I'm not sure how that happened um, obviously if the copper uh, shim of some type was making a connection somewhere or bridging a connection somewhere that can cause shorts which can damage your GPU. Good thing is is I'm able to get it up and running and I only have two monitors anyway so I have plenty of room to go ahead and use the other display ports or HDMI cables. Thermals are a lot better, hash rates a lot better. I haven't even pushed a memory yet and I'm, a w I'm way ahead of what I would have been originally. So because this EVGA card has a copper cold plate, should you even copper shim it? Well, yes and no. It's really going to be up to you to decide. Uh, realistically, the best thing that I could say is, is that there's a cold plate or excuse me, a copper shim plate, an entire plate instead of individual shims that you can utilize to put on top of the memory to drop temperatures uh, pretty well. Uh, I can't validate it because I haven't tested it out yet, but rather than having these individual shims which can you know, stack up, especially on the four module side and wind up causing a short like you saw with my situation, uh, it may be better to just get this plate. It will cover each memory module um, and it will also avoid, avoid the SMDs around the GPU die. So that may be something you wanna consider. However, for me, 
thermal pads got the job done. I'm gonna stick with what I know works. Uh, the heat sink certainly has a lot of surface area to deal with the increased memory thermals, but I did have to bend the memory, or excuse me, the back plate of this GPU just a little bit. If you look very carefully there, it's slightly bent just enough so that way the back plate is putting pressure against the memory modules and pushing the thermal pads against it. So I got 3 mil G lid on the back side of the PCB and then I have Thermal Grizzlies uh, minus pad 8 on the front side of the PCB. Everything else is running nice and cool. However, because this GPU is drawing over 260 watts from a 6 pin through a normal ATX power supply, I need to shut down this rig and get it back into my main system. So that's the data that I have for you. I just wanted to share my results. Uh, just making sure the thermal pads make a solid connection will help you out dramatically. Should you copper shim the EVJ 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra that already has a copper cold plate? Possibly not. Just get yourself some good thermal pads. It's worth the investment. Otherwise, it was fun playing around with these copper shims on various GPUs. That's going to do it for today's video. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Don't forget to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out various links in the description. And I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.